Hello, students and instructors. My name is Nate with Wi-Fi CFI, here to give you our quick tip of the week, the four types of hypoxia. Now, this is gonna be a really quick video. We're gonna talk really quickly about what hypoxia is and then the four different subtypes of hypoxia. What we see as instructors a lot of times is students can kind of understand hypoxia and they can have rote memorization of what the four different types are, but they don't really understand it. So we're gonna to try to break those four different types down, make them very easy to understand and to remember so that you can apply it in your flying and on your test. Guaranteed, you're going to have questions about these different types of hypoxia on both your FAA written tests and or your check rides. Guaranteed, they will be there. So let's break them down, let's make them simple, let's make it quick. So hypoxia, what is it? Hypoxia means reduced oxygen or not enough oxygen. If the brain is subjected to oxygen deprivation, it will affect a pilot's decision-making processes and that can lead to life-threatening errors in judgment. So hypoxia, pretty simple to understand. We're just not getting enough oxygen. We're now going to break down the four different types or the four different ways that you cannot get enough oxygen or the four different reasons your body or your brain is not getting those oxygen molecules that it needs. The first one is called hypoxic hypoxia. This is caused by a decrease in partial pressure when flying at higher altitudes. Basically, when you're flying at lower altitudes, the air is more dense, right? As we know that. And so all the oxygen molecules are closer together. When you're down at sea level, you take a breath, you're breathing in more oxygen molecules. But when you go higher in the atmosphere, the air is less dense, so all those oxygen molecules are spread further apart. Hence, when you take a breath, you're not getting as much oxygen into your lungs, right? You take a breath, not as many oxygen molecules are getting into your lungs because the oxygen molecules are spread further apart because there is less pressure at altitude. That's why when we're flying up at altitude, we have certain rules and regulations that we need to follow as far as wearing an oxygen mask or using some kind of supplemental oxygen. And that is so that we are getting enough oxygen molecules at those higher altitudes. That's the first one, hypoxic hypoxia. The second one is called hypemic hypoxia. Now, hypemic hypoxia occurs when the blood cells in the body are unable to take up and transport oxygen molecules. So there's plenty of oxygen molecules in the environment around you. Maybe you're down at sea level, all right? You got plenty of oxygen molecules in the environment around you. So when you breathe in, you're getting a whole bunch into your lungs. But for some reason, when the oxygen molecules are going into your lungs, they are not then attaching themselves to your blood cells to be transported throughout your body. The most common cause of that that you're gonna see with flying is gonna be carbon monoxide poisoning because carbon monoxide attaches itself to your blood cells 200 times faster than oxygen. So if you have an exhaust leak in the cockpit, you got your heater on, you've got some kind of exhaust shroud leak, and you're getting some of that exhaust into the cockpit, you can be getting carbon monoxide poisoning, and that carbon monoxide is attaching itself to your blood cells, and it's blocking oxygen from attaching to your blood cells. So even if you were at a low altitude, you're flying around at 2,000 feet above sea level, You've got plenty of oxygen molecules around you. They're not attaching themselves to your blood cells because carbon monoxide is taking their spot. So oxygen is not being transported around the body. The third one, histotoxic hypoxia. This occurs when the brain rejects the oxygen molecules sorry, that are being delivered to it by the bloodstream. Again, let's go back to the very beginning. We have plenty of oxygen molecules around us. We're breathing them in. They are attaching to our blood cells just fine. They're being transported throughout our body just fine. But when they get to our brain, our brain is rejecting it. The brain's like, ah, I don't want it. The brain is blocking the blood cells from delivering oxygen to it. And that is our histotoxic hypoxia. You can think of toxic. The most common cause of histotoxic hypoxia is alcohol and drugs. That's why when you do alcohol and drugs, they call it getting high because it's essentially like hypoxia, right? You're being at a higher altitude. It feels like you're at a high altitude where your brain is not getting a lot of oxygen. So even though you're at a lower altitude, they call it getting high because it's hypoxia, right? 
your brain is rejecting those oxygen molecules. Again, it's most commonly going to be caused by alcohol and drugs. And the last one, the fourth and final type of hypoxia is called stagnant hypoxia. This occurs when the blood is not flowing. There's plenty of oxygen molecules around us. We are breathing them in just fine. They're attaching to our blood cells just fine, but they, the blood cannot get up to the brain for some reason. There's, for some reason, your blood can't flow up to the brain. Now, what would cause that in flying? The most common cause is going to be G-forces. Now, if you're flying a little Cessna 172 or a Piper or something, you're going through flight school, you're probably not going to have this problem. But if you start to fly something, you know, much faster or you're in, a, you know, a fighter jet or whatever, and you're pulling these extreme G-forces, these really high G-forces, it can prevent blood from getting up to your brain. Blood will, as you can see on the slide, pool in your lower extremities. Your heart will not be strong enough to pump it up to your brain because of those G-forces. So all the oxygen molecules are down here at your feet. And if that happens, you're going to get hypoxic because we're not getting this oxygen-rich blood delivering that oxygen to your brain. And those are the four different types of hypoxia. Simple, right? Keep them straightforward, kind of keep them organized in that manner. A couple other things we're going to go over and then we'll be done with the video are some of the symptoms of the hypoxia. So if you are getting hypoxia, what are you going to feel? You've got a peripheral cyanosis. This is kind of what it looks like where your fingertips or lips kind of start to turn blue. Headache, you're going to have decreased response times. Impaired judgment, euphoria, which is just like a feeling of everything is fantastic in the world. Even if things are going bad, you're like, oh, this is great. This is so, so fun. We're having a blast. That's euphoria. Visual impairment, drowsiness, dizzy sensations, numbness, tingling in the fingers and toes. If you're feeling any of those things while you're up flying, you may want to suspect hypoxia. And if you do suspect hypoxia, what should you do? There's basically three different things you can do. You can descend down to a lower altitude. So if you were too high in the atmosphere and you were getting hypoxic hypoxia, well, let's go ahead and get down to a lower altitude where the air is more dense. We can stop pulling G-forces. That one's pretty simple. If we we're getting stagnant hypoxia, let's stop pulling G so that the heart can start pumping blood up to the brain again. And lastly, we can put on an oxygen mask, right? An, an, an FAA approved oxygen mask, we can go ahead and put that on depending on what at flight uh, level or altitude we're flying at and that should start providing us with oxygen as well. So that's it for this one, guys. More tips and tricks for all the best aviation tips and tricks. You can study hundreds of hours of free content. So a bunch of these quick tip videos, we got flashcards, we got podcasts, we have full length audiobooks, all of that stuff for free, both on our website at wificfi.com and on our free mobile app. So go to wificfi.com. There's instructions there for how to download that mobile app and get all of these free tips and like I said, hundreds of hours of other free content. Thanks for joining us on this one, guys. We'll see you on the next one coming up soon.